Hi folks, welcome to the channel. If you're new or returning subscriber, please remember to like our videos, provide comments to help us with continuous improvement to our content, share with friends and family, and most importantly, subscribe. Thank you. So today I have um, two past students that I'd like to have a chat with regarding our virtual mental series. So we have Lucy and we have uh, Krufika. So Krufika, I know that you've got a, sh a short form that you like to be called. Um, yes, Krufi is fine. Krufi, okay. So I've never called you that. So Krufi. <laughs> okay, so let me just note that now. Krufi, okay. So that's like a more or less point it out. This is more or less like a mental series. So what I like to do is to inspire the next generation of young persons, particularly, you know, a young lady, because I have a daughter and she's like really into like design and stuff. So I just thought, that, okay, why not have a catalogue of stuff that she can you know, reflect on and see how that motivates her into pursuing some form of STEM-related uh, profession. So whether she decides to go into the product design, engineering, art of STEM, or more the medical side of things, at least there's something to 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 look forward to. All right. So let's start off by talking about your personal journey uh, before going to um, university. So what motivated you to pursue uh, design and technology in, in the first instance? And what were the things that influenced you to pursue that from key stage five or key stage four, key stage five into um, university eventually? So who wants to start? Try? Yeah. <laughs> um, so I did maths, physics and art for my A-levels. So very much liked the STEM side of things, but really liked being creative and like getting stuck in. So I was really like stuck with what I should do like because I wanted to do a degree that was a combination of both like the creative aspects and the technical aspects so then I was looking into it and I found product design and I realized that it would like allow me to do like everything that I liked um, like it was a combination of like the subjects I was doing so that was the main reason I pursued it. And I was always really interested in like innovative new products, like all the stuff, like the James Dyson Award. So I thought it was mm -hmm. really interesting and it excited me. So seeing the kind of work that people were producing, um, like pushed me to pursue product design, I think. And just wanting to do something where I could be creative, but also like, put my maths and physics skills into use. Yeah. Yeah. How about yourself, Lucy? Um, I was pretty similar. I did maths, physics, product design at A-level. Um, and for GCSE, I did product design as well. And I just, I really enjoyed maths and I didn't want to let maths go, but I also really enjoyed product design and it was like my strongest thing I worked on at A-level. And I just really enjoyed it. And so like, all the way up from like year seven up to A-levels, I had one tutor who was like really encouraging and really kind of helped me out with everything that I wanted to try and do. And um, my A-level project, I just, I loved it. And so, because I was so invested in product design and then I came to a Loughborough University Open Day, I was, I just kind of looked at it and was like, yeah, this is, this is for me. Cause yeah, I wanted maths and physics and I liked design. So it just <laughs> worked pretty well. Yeah. Right, cool. And then, Reflecting on, you know, back in the days when you were um, in your GCSEs, in your A-level, um, proceeding to university, I mean, did you have any um, role models that you wanted to kind of like follow in terms of the, this particular profession? Because you mentioned Dyson. 
Um, I think it was seeing the the people that won the James Dyson Awards. Like it was really Mm -hmm. cool seeing like the inventive new products that was coming out. I I think that's what excited me the most. I wouldn't say there was (laughs) any specific role models that I had. I was very much like new to the world of design like starting this course so like everything I was I was learning from scratch because I'd never done product design before but I I think that was good like I had to learn like pick up everything really quickly um had to sort of push myself (laughs) to learn (laughs) okay all right cool so let's assume that I mean before entering uh you know uh university I and mean, we're going through the doors of the design school what was your perception before then as to what product design entailed from I your thought, perspective from from what i thought before like i did the course and i came to life design school i thought it was a lot about making a functional product and working equally on both how it, how the product will work and the mechanics and electronics inside it as well as looking at how it will look on the outside to like the average consumer. Um, and so I thought it would just be like a mix of that, merging both the maths and physics with design. Yeah, I thought so, the same. Yeah. I was very much um, like thought that that's what I would <laughs> yeah. be doing. Okay, all right, cool. So now let's talk about your, your journey uh, once you went through those doors um, in the design school. How did you find your first year? What was your experiences of your first year? Did that kind of change your perception as to what product design is all about? Um, it's been a while. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think for me, yes, because I I was very new to it. Also, I really didn't like. I think I knew what I was getting into, but also I didn't like. I think when you apply for a degree, you definitely have a different impression as to what yeah. it is than when you actually do it. So I was. Like it was all new to me, but I did enjoy it. I think, um, you know, there was like a we got to learn a little bit of everything, mm. so I felt like there was a good balance between my academic life and my social life during first year, and I thought it was like a good introduction to the field. It was just it was different to what to what I expected, but it was enough for me to stay. <laughs> I think for me, it was quite, I think first year was quite similar to what I thought would happen because we had like the workshop, um, the three workshops. We had the fabrication one, the metal one, and like the one multi-materials one. Yeah. And um, that was really similar to what I had done at A-levels and like going through those workshops was kind of what I thought we'd be doing. Um, I think the only thing that did surprise me a lot was the design practice module where it was a lot more like, how the product looked and the focus was on that and that was something that I was kind of a bit more thrown by but first year I really enjoyed I think I think the amount of work was a big step up from A levels um but I didn't enjoy it yeah 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 I think that's that's always been the case particularly the first year I mean it's not necessarily um the modules or the units that you will be undertaking it's more about okay you're getting commitments from this module. You're getting commitments from that module. How do you go about balancing all that workload to meet the necessary deadline? So how are you able to adapt down the line? I think I tried lots of different things because um, <laughs> that did really throw me because it was, I had like maths and physics at A-level and then like one design project through a level and then like you said when you came here you would have multiple things coming in from different modules and they would all kind of be completely separate and so I know I tried timetabling it and being like well this one's worth this much so I'll spend half my week on that um but it kind of got to the point where it's like I had one project that I really focused on and then the others I would use as like if I need a break or if I was like stuck with ideas for one project, I'd then just move on to the other one. And so I think that's how I kind of manage it. I use them as like breaks from each other, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, well, would you say that's probably the, the biggest challenge in terms of year one, balancing your workload? Yeah, I think it's getting into routine because you're trying to juggle your 
like getting the work done and a completely new course and trying to make friends and you know trying to figure out when to wash your clothes <laughs> and tidying your flat and yeah it's a whole different like ball game because you you have to balance like everything yeah your, your parents won't know to help yeah. you anymore <laughs> nope. yeah you're more or less on your own so yeah yeah so no mummy or daddy or big sis or big brother wake you up and then to say, hey, it's time it's time for you to, uh, oh, so you've got a class at nine o'clock or you've got, nah. All right, so that's, that's, quite, that's quite insightful. So let's talk about, okay, you've gone through year one. You've now adjusted to how things are done at university. How smooth was that, the transition from the first year into the second year? How do you find the second year in general in terms of, okay, what are the things that really motivated you to keep pushing forward to making any of the progression um, on your courses? But what were some of the things that you really found found quite challenging? Um, and what were the things that you really enjoyed that kind of like set the tone mm -hmm to this point of your journey whereby you've now made that consensus decision as to what you really want to do? Um, do you want to take this I one? Think, uh, I, don't, I, don't, <laughs> I think there is, a, there is a really big jump, I think, in terms of <laughs> workload from first to second year, and I wasn't expecting it. I was very much thinking that it would be similar amount to first year. So then going into it, I was, I think I got that initial shock of like, oh, like, it's not the same like we actually have a lot more work to do um so it was like again like a reassessment of like how do I juggle things around what do I have to sacrifice um like how am I gonna get the work done but also like do social things and stuff like that um yeah it was tricky but um yeah it was you just had to prioritize really because there was some modules that were you know higher weighted and it, it, a lot of the time it was we had so many deadlines I think it was yeah. literally just what what's the next deadline <laughs> get that done first and then think about the next project so I don't know if I balanced it in the best way possible <laughs> but I think sometimes when you have a lot of work it's it's hard to yeah I think to kind of add on to that was I think my second year experience was a bit a bit different to others because I got quite ill during it and um so I was trying to just get better but also it meant a lot of deadlines ended all up at once and because I had signed up for other positions around the university like I was on the freak committees and so like for my hall so freak stands for food residential ethics environment and campus I, I got lost there because I heard freak I was like okay well, where are we going <laughs> okay, so that, that's, okay that, it that's was all about like, ethics and environment around campus and so I did that for my hall the design school and I became like the vice chair of it for the university and so because in second year you have got to know the university you've got to know everyone around you and you know what you can do you've got a lot more stuff as well as the course on you and so it was like it was very hard to kind of juggle everything um but yeah I think second year was a big jump from first just because as well you've got the like first year we all worked super hard for it but it wasn't it didn't necessarily count for our degree yeah, yeah. and whereas second year because that counted for your degree I think you had that added pressure of you wanted you exactly. wanted to do as well as you could and you wanted to do what you knew you could do but yeah. because we had so much juggle we're trying to do as well as we could in literally everything and um I think there was also the added pressure of placement I think yeah. we all wanted to do mm. well so that, you know maybe get a good placement and like yeah. figure out what we wanted to do for placement <laughs> so yeah it, it was it was a big yeah. year because yeah. as well it was I think for a lot of people on our course it was the first time they properly applied for jobs and yeah. like re and made CVs and portfolios to apply for things and so it was trying to balance all of that and like interviews and everything like you said like there was a lot that was on your mind that was all new and mm -hmm. you wanted to get done, but yeah, yeah. so big yeah. jump. Particularly, particularly those yeah. um, design portfolios and stuff. So I think that yeah. kind of like took centre stage in terms of uh, um, your second year. Um, so what were the things in terms of what you really liked and did those things then start, start to set that tone in terms of what you really want to pursue? 
in terms of your focus for design? Um, what do All right, you so let's break it down there. Because when you, <laughs> cause you, you start over by, because again, year one is kind of like your knowledge building, knowledge and skill uh, building in terms of like the fundamentals. And year two is kind of where you're now having a greater feel for what you're in for. And that's also the, the starting point for you to start diverging in terms of, okay, what is it that I really enjoy? And what is it that I really want to start mastering? So for certain people, it will be more or less the industrial design bit, more of the sketching and the modeling and stuff. And for certain people, it's more the back end um, design bit. So building prototypes, um, understanding product functionality, things like that. And some people more into, okay, understanding form and how that correlates to manufacturing. So from your perspective, what were the things that started to get, you know, the, the bells ringing in terms of what you really want to pursue and what type of designer you'd like to see yourself in the future? Um, so I was able to do the DMT module before COVID happened. And I found that really interesting because we were actually able to manufacture like the mold till and everything. So I quite enjoyed that. And then um, also like programming our um, electronics project was really like interesting as well. Like I learned a lot. So I think I definitely took an interest for the more like technical engineering aspects of design. So like going into applying for placements, I was definitely trying to like um, aim for the more engineering based technical jobs um obviously because of covid like a lot of them were cancelled and <laughs> there was a lot of issues so i don't think i got exactly what i wanted <laughs> but that was like definitely what i realized i was more interested in yeah because I, I, I can't like right now remember that it was your group that was hit uh, with yeah, COVID. Yeah, sure. so, so yeah so Fortunately, I think you were the first group that didn't really get the chance to do any fabrication. Yeah, no, we're not, we didn't do squash ball. Mm. We didn't get to do squash ball. Yeah, what was a shame. How about yourself, Lucy? Um, so for me, I was in the half of the year that did miss the DMT, so the Design for Manufacturing module. Um, so we did it, but it was all remote, and we didn't get to make the mold tool. Oh, anymore. yeah, yeah, you're right. And that was... I think that was a massive shame for me because that module was what I was looking forward to for the whole year. Um, I've been, I've always been quite like technical based. I'm a lot more, I like to know how something will work. I like to figure out stuff. I really like problem solving. And with that module, it was really like, you've got to design this mold tool and it needs to perfectly manufacture this widget. And mm. I really like my widget. It was, it was just a fork, but it was like a fork that you could, you could yeah. put in your bag. It wouldn't make your bag dirty, but it made me really like excited. Yeah, I, think um, I, I can't even vaguely remember. Yeah, because I do remember the fork. Yeah, so I think I, I probably assessed that one. I'm not 100 percent certain, but I do, I do remember I it. Think did. Yeah, um, yeah, I do remember it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. but I. That module, was it for I pot noodle or something, or something similar. No, that was that was a year. I think that was the year after us. Mine was for M and S, and it was a fork basically that came apart in two parts. Yes, 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 yes. I do remember that the now. Fork, the fork prongs inside the handle, so that once oh. you eat it and it's dirty, you can put it in your bag and then. Okay. It dirty. <laughs> um, but it was really right. fun. But, but despite all of that, did that half like set the scene for you in terms of, okay, what is it that I really want to pursue on my placement? So that was, that module was really like, I strongly enjoyed it, even though I did have to do half it remote from home. Really enjoyed it, love manufacturing. And I also really enjoyed the electronics and mechanics modules because, again, I, I love maths and physics. And so doing both of them. I just I think that set the the like ground for me was that I wanted to go into more the engineering kind of side of it, but also not totally related to the course was because I did the ethics and environment thing mm. that then made me want to pursue kind of sustainability in mm -hmm. it as well. Some type of like sustainability thing that's even though it wasn't related to design, that then impacted me and where I want to go with design because I learned so much about it. So yeah. that kind of reminds me. 
because again, you know, because it, it, it seems as remember you're like really interested in like how things work and stuff. So why not pursue engineering? So, it will sound kind of bad, but I didn't think I was good enough um, to do it. Um, <laughs> so I did really enjoy design and I, I mm. really thought product design was the perfect mix for me because I didn't want to lose the creative stuff from it. But I was also um, like physics and maths. I did have, I put a lot of work in at a level. And so I just thought that like my school, it weren't, it wasn't like an engineering kind of focused school. Mm. And so there, the drive wasn't there for me to pursue it. And because I did like creative subjects and I didn't want to let that go. I kind of was like product design is where I should go. But yeah, if I went into like further education, I think it would be to do with kind of blending it into some type of engineering. Yeah. Um, the most important thing is enjoying the journey. I think that's the most important thing. <laughs> right, so now let's talk about, okay, you've done with sec the, uh, the second year. So you decided to take a year out you know, do a placement, earn a bit of money and things like that. So let's talk about your, your placement. So, um, Krufi, what did you do on your placement? So my placement was like really unrelated to what I started to get interested in in second year. But I think because of COVID, I was just like, I, I, just, I was just willing to take what I could get. And okay. it did seem interesting. I wanted to try something different. and. Um, Basically, I was a packaging technician at Neil's Yard Remedies. So I was working in a lab doing like uh, compatibility testing on uh, formulations in their packaging and working on things like transit trials and um, helping out with packaging. Um, I got to work on like um, a beauty box gift that they released, which was quite interesting um it was quite logistical because it was a lot to do with like issues that were cropping up with components that they'd outsourced and like uh, communicating with suppliers i did get to do some creative work whilst i was there as well um working on like um injected molded parts and like helping out with market research and um doing some presentations and things like that so it was a good experience for me in terms of learning how to work with people collaborate across teams because I was working with like quality control manufacturing formulation mm -hmm. so it was it was really like I learned a lot in terms of like how do you take a product through to commercial release like how the MPD uh, life cycle works and a lot about that and then Neil's Yard is really sustainability focused as well so that was like a huge factor of, of what interested me in applying for it because um a lot of their products are like organic so they use um ingredients like grown on site and they use like recyclable packaging things like that i thought you know this is like a company that's really interested in reducing their environmental impact so i got to do like a lot of research and sustainability and like um circular economy circular things like economy, that yeah. You know, yeah that so I, I did my dissertation on that as well so it like it was really interesting and like um I, I like that made me realize I was interested in sustainability as well like like you see <laughs> but um yeah like I learned about a completely different aspect of design that I like never thought about before so it was not exactly what I was wanting to do but I learned a lot and it made me realize that I would I would be interested in going into sustainability in the future. So I think it was good in terms of that. Yeah. Well, at least, you know, at least it's, it's set you on the path that, okay, you know what, maybe your interests and what you really may want to specialize in the future might be within uh, sustainability product, uh, sustainable product design and things like that. How about yourself, Lucy? So if I recall, you had the opportunity to go to Asia or something. Yeah. Japan, I, Japan or Thailand? Japan. <laughs> Japan, okay. Um, so, of course, Corona hit, um, which then stopped me from going to Japan uh, during oh. the year. 
which was really sad because basically, as I said, I wanted to go into like manufacturing and yeah, I've always wanted to go to Japan. Um, it'd been one, it'd been one of the top countries that I've wanted to go to since I was really young. And so I was really excited when I saw the opportunity to like arise. And so I was a junior designer for Makino, um, which is a milling machine company in Japan. Mm. Um, and so what we did was design the splash guards, which are like the, the outer casing of the milling machines. And so we kind of worked on a range of different projects. We worked on like the splash guards or like the machines for the future, and as well as like supporting products that go alongside the machines. Um, so like the control units that people will interact with. Um, I can't say too much about much more of what I did, but um, uh, it was really good. It was very interesting to see. I just, I wish I would have gone out to Japan. So it was a very unique experience because it was, the time difference was about eight or nine hours, depending on what time of the year it was. Mm. And so when we woke up, they were just finishing work. And so we'd always have meetings like in the mornings, but then everything else was kind of between the team of interns that were in the UK. And so it became very like, it became very like not independent, but like independent between our team. Um, mm. And we work a lot together and it was very interesting because we'd have like calls with the engineers at like 8 a.m and then we'd be fed on some information um and we'd work on it throughout the day but we wouldn't have much feedback until the next day and so it was very like it was very good to learn how to do this and it made me become a lot more independent with my designing because we mm. weren't always completely around other people um but the company were really nice very generous and they offered to fly me out to japan in Easter this year. And so oh, okay. I guess two weeks um, wasn't quite the year that I was here, <laughs> but the two weeks, incredible. We got to visit like all of the factories and we saw like the insides of the machines that we had built. And so we were, we were working on these things that were like five meters big, they were massive. And we we're kind of trying to imagine it. And we made like AR models to put in our gardens to kind of yeah. try and imagine the scale. But then when we actually got to see them, that was that was really cool. Like we saw them as they were like being built and so we could see all of the insides and that was great experience. Loved it. <laughs> oh, interesting. I think that was, that was very good. Um, what the company did for you guys to say, okay, you know what? You missed out on to Japan. So we're going to fly you down there yeah. to check out. I, I thought that's, that's, that's good. That's good. Not a lot of companies who really do that. So yeah, yeah. they were a really lovely company. Um, yeah. Everyone that worked there was very nice. Yeah. Right. So let's 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 um, delve a, a bit more into um, your experience, and let's relate that to your experiences um, at uni. So, particularly when it comes to like your philosophy in terms of design. So, um, as you already know, um, your university, Loughborough, um, has this um, fixation of using like the double diamond thinking as kind of like the benchmark to base everything on so we've got the point for uh, divergent thinking and the point for convergent thinking then divergent then convergent so divergent is where okay you now you've got like some form of brief you're now going to explore and discover a bit more into the problem but more or less um focusing more on how central the user would be and how things need to evolve around the user. Then once you've explored that, then you start to filter what makes sense and what doesn't to the point whereby you then now establish, okay, what's the rationale moving forward to ideate and eventually come up with some form of resolution to the problem that you're working on. From your experiences in terms of what you observed on your placement, has that altered your general philosophy in terms of how design should be? Um, I think mine was unique because it was like, like all of the aspects probably of the double diamond wall split up across different teams. So I think I realized that it's not like, it's, it's, it's rare that you would have to go through the whole process yourself. Mm -hmm. it's very much like you have to collaborate and work together or you have to hand off at some point to a different team and yeah. that's it um 
so yeah I think I I wouldn't say it completely applied to what I did because I was doing a lot of the more like technical side of things rather than the um ID like the actual design process but I think in an overall sort of thing it's a it's I think the design direction is often guided in bigger companies a lot by like the the higher up managers Mm -hmm. so it's it's difficult for just like um the common team members to really control it but you yeah it's very much like um yeah you're working on a specific part of it and and Mm -hmm. that's it Uh, at least that was my experience yeah um how about yourself lucy I I feel I feel like I really struggle with the like the double diamond thinking because mm-hmm. when I go through my design process, I follow the process that works best for what I'm working on. And so for me, I think what we found a lot when we're working on projects, we would go like we'd broaden what we'd work on, and then when there was when we found something that would kind of work, we'd then kind of like narrow it down. And then it would get broader again. And when like it would keep going in and out, like it's not necessarily these two diamonds. It was just multiple along the way. And also for a lot of machines, there are so many different elements that went on them. You kind of had to work on different bits separately and then kind of bring it all together. And so mm. that doesn't that also doesn't necessarily follow that same structure because it was like so much stuff that we had to think about that then all we worked on individually and then you bring it all together to try and like then do the final bit. I feel like the double diamond works quite well for when you're trying to come up with like a form or find like figuring out the final kind of, once you've got all the pieces, trying to put that all kind of into one. Mm-hmm. I think it then kind of works with that. But I think for me, the process really depended on what project we're doing, how many factors there are that influenced it and kind of mm-hmm. that way. So I've become a lot more understanding yeah. of just, if you need to follow what's right for the project, not necessarily try and stick mm-hmm. to yeah, exactly. Because I think, you know, um, with, with, with facts, I think, again, it's, it's, it's not just you. I think there are a number of people that will kind of like look at that and it kind of like creates that um, perception that the process is linear. And with the process being that linear, it's quite a rigid set in stone thing. But in reality, it it, 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 sh- it should be kind of like fluid it. It shouldn't be linear per se. I mean, because again, certain things will have to probably come to an abrupt stop too for you to go back and revisit certain instances along the journey to ensure that you're making those iterations that make sense towards your end goal. So so I think, you know, my thing is, yeah, you know, there are different models out there. It all comes down to you. What makes sense for you? But the most important thing is that the client has to take center stage. It's important that you do understand the needs of the client or who of the end user is going to be and ensure that those stakeholders are factored into your decision making to ensure that once you've come up with some form of solution, it does check most of the boxes that you intended to achieve in the first place. So, yeah. So, yeah, so that's 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 quite interesting. So coming uh, uh, from the placement, did that solidify your uh, intent to maybe focus a bit more on the back end bits of design? So that's like the, the more technical side of it, as opposed to the more industrial design side of things. I think for me, it made me. So I was in like the industrial design team, and. For me, the, my placement made me focus, like want to put a lot more focus into how my product did look. I think for like first and second year, because I really enjoy kind of the function and like that side of it, I put less effort into how it would look because I yeah. wanted to make sure it could work and I understood how it could work. Whereas my placement, because we were so focused on making something that wouldn't necessarily look that pretty into something that would look really nice and look like, mm-hmm. like people want to buy it, it then made me in my final year project want my product to look good. And I had more of an appreciation for the industrial side, design side of it. Like I definitely wanted to make it work and like understand how, but my placement actually made me focus more on 
industrial yeah. design. So at least it's, it's now giving you that balance now. That, okay, yeah. you know what? Yeah, even though it's important for a product to work accordingly, it's also important that it's packaged in such a way that it looks good and it would more or less draw in the needed contours to make. Because again, fundamentally, everything comes down to money. So if you design a product and you're not able to recover the cost and the product's not maturing on the market, then what's the point? So, you know, all that, you know, can't, needs to come together for you to design a product that meets the, the desires and the needs of the market. Well, that's, that's quite interesting. Okay.